This video is about making a simple reed instrument from a drinking straw. It only takes a couple of minutes to make, and if you practice, you might be able to play a tune on it, or even make it talk. Kinda sorta. I heard the most exotic sounds from the musical instruments that the snake charmers used when I lived in Bangladesh in South Asia. That's when I became interested in reed instruments. I was surprised to learn how many instruments that seemed so different all relied on vibrating reeds to make the sound. Saxophones, clarinets, so-called bagpipes, harmonicas, oboes, snake charmers pipes, even duck calls. In fact, when our lungs blow air through our vocal cords or larynx to talk and sing, we become like reed instruments. When you talk or sing and you put your fingers to your neck, you can actually feel the vocal cords vibrating in your throat. The rain in Spain falls mainly on the plain. To make a reed instrument, all you need is some straws and good scissors. A paper punch to make finger holes is optional. You might want some earplugs. This is not a quiet activity. I prefer flexible straws. They're the longest and the plastic seems easier to cut. To make things a bit confusing, there are now two thicknesses of flexible straw. See how the one kind telescopes into the other? I prefer the wider kind that's one quarter inch or six millimeters in diameter to the thinner five millimeter kind, but I can make the thinner kind work and the non-flexible straws can work in a pinch. Let's get our straw term straight. Small part, big part, bendy part. Younger kids will need help with each step, but they will be able to play the instrument. Now try it, see if it's gonna work. Blow into it really hard. There you go. Okay. The first step is to flatten about an inch or around 25 millimeters at the small end of the straw. You'd think that flattening it between two hard surfaces would crease it, but no. I pressed with all my might, but this is not flattened enough. It has to be flattened this much. Pliers don't work very well either. They tend to chew up the straw. I found that only our front teeth have both the force to crease the straws and the sensitivity not to mangle them the way pliers do. When you flatten the end of the straw with your teeth, it's important to apply pressure on the edges, not just in the middle of the straw. I've slowed this down so we can see. Even without seeing, it's amazing how nimble and aware we are of what's happening inside our mouths. So put about half of the small part of the straw past your teeth, gently close your jaw, and pull out the straw to flatten it. Don't mangle it. This is what we're looking for. It can be a little challenging when front teeth are in various stages of outage or coming inage, but do the best you can. Cutting the reeds has to be done just so. Sometimes I call them bunny ears to help convey the shape to younger groups. This is what you want. The reeds won't work if they're too long or too short, and it might take several tries to get it right. Kids will demand a new straw if they bungle cutting the reeds, but actually you can cut the straw and start new several times before you need a new straw.
to paraphrase Goldilocks and the Three Bears, this is too long, this is too short, and this is just right. Often the flaps will stick together where they were cut. Just pinch them a little to separate. Blow into the straw pretty hard. The reeds must be free to vibrate, so they have to go in your mouth, past your lips and teeth. Furthermore, you have to be careful not to crush the straw with your lips or teeth, or the air won't be able to go through. If you can't get sound, remember that the reeds must be close but not touching. Sometimes you can get far apart reeds to work just by blowing harder, but if the straw was not flattened enough in the first step, often you can fix the problem by bending the reeds and creasing at the base. First one way, then the other, then separate slightly they should end up closer than they started. This is how far apart they were to start. This is how close they are now. A subtle difference, but it can be the difference between it working and not working. By the way, instead of blowing air into the reed end, you can suck air from the opposite end. It can be a real eye-opener for visual and tactile learners. You can see the reeds vibrate, and if you touch them gently, feel the vibration. If you touch them too hard, they won't, they won't vibrate anymore. <laughs> Once you get the reeds working, you can go in so many creative directions. Here are a few leads, then just experiment. Straws are cheap. The simplest way to change pitch higher or lower is to blow harder or softer. This is especially effective for fine tuning, but there's not enough range to play a song. Notice that if you shorten the instrument, it raises the pitch. You can make a modification to your instrument that harnesses that principle. If you take another straw and slice the long part lengthwise until you get to the bendy part, it overlaps and curls a bit so you can telescope it into your reed instrument. If you use this in conjunction with how hard you breathe in, with practice you can play a recognizable tune. You can also change pitch by punching fingering holes into the straw, but it takes a little more attention both to make and to use. The punch will cut through two layers of plastic straws, so only about one third to one half of the punch circle should be on the straw. If the hole is too big, you won't be able to cover it effectively with your finger. To use the fingering holes, you have to remember that if the hole closest to you is uncovered, covering and uncovering holes farther away won't make any difference. Three or four is about all young kids can keep track of. Just as you can raise the pitch by making the straw shorter, you can make the pitch lower by taping on more straws. I blew a reed instrument into a plastic pipe. I kind of thought it sounded like an Australian digity too, but the kids thought it sounded like something else. Remember how we can feel vibrations in our throat when talking? 
by shaping our resonant vocal cavity with our throat, cheeks, tongue, teeth, and lips, we sculpt the sound into speech. When you think about it, about the only difference between the sounds oo, e, and ah is really just a slight change in how we open our mouth. Here's a very crude but working model of our vocal tract. We use our reed instrument instead of a larynx or vocal cords, and our hands make a resonant chamber. For a simple straw instrument, there's still a lot of mystery. I don't know how the kids get this sound. <laughs> Call it avant-garde or annoying. Something they do with their teeth or lips, but I haven't been able to do it. Who knows what other curious things you can do with this project. If you discover some new innovation, contact me through sciencetoymaker.org and share it with the world.